Hey, thanks for tuning in today. If you're new to Simple Church and you live in the St. Louis area, we encourage you to come check out one of our live services. We meet every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and we would love to see you. If you've been tuning in for a while now and, and maybe you even consider Simple to be your church, I want to invite you to partner with us financially. We've made it simple, pun intended. All you need to do is go to the webpage located at the bottom of your screen. If you've already partnered with us financially, thank you. Thank you for coming alongside of us and helping us inspire people all around the world to follow Jesus. And now here's today's service.
Today we're in part two of our new series, uh, Bringing Heaven Down. And uh, last week we took a look at the Lord's Prayer and uh, 
remember that anytime you talk about or we talk about the Lord's Prayer, there's something I, I want you to remember that, that's real important. The, the whole Lord's Prayer thing was Jesus' response to his followers when they said, hey, Jesus, teach us how to pray like you. Um, it must have been an amazing sight because they, they, they were watching and going, man, he has such a connection with the Father. And, and then they ask him, Jesus, could you teach us how to do that? How, how, how do we pray like you? And, uh, and, and that's where the Lord's Prayer came from. Last week, there was this one particular line that we really focused in on, and it's on the screens. It says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we determined last week that it's not saying that prayer over and over and over again that brings God's kingdom to earth. It's not you and I memorizing that prayer and saying it every Sunday or every day of our life that, that brings God's will to, to planet earth, okay? We said that saying that prayer over and over is good because it helps us with our attitude. It helps you and I get centered on the fact that there is a God, that God has a will, and it helps us to put our will down. It, the, the whole purpose of saying that prayer over and over is for us to recenter ourselves or align ourselves with God and His will and His agenda. Well, we also discovered this that when you look at Scripture, um, if, if you claim to be a Jesus follower and you look at Scripture, uh, you, you start to realize something very, very close. It's like blindingly obvious. And that is that anybody who chooses to be a Jesus follower, you bear a responsibility in bringing God's kingdom to earth. You, you are a huge part of God's kingdom come and God's will be done on earth. I want you to think back, and hopefully this will kind of help you. Uh, the first ever Christmas morning is when God literally sent heaven to earth in the form of a baby. And then God used Jesus, the life of Christ, to show you and I and everybody what, what he was like and, and what he liked. And now God has this desire to give you and I, anybody who chooses to be a follower of his, he's got this desire to give us his spirit, or what scripture refers to as the Holy Spirit, to empower us to live like him to act like him, to react like him, to treat people like him, therefore bringing heaven to earth. Jesus' followers have this huge responsibility to bring heaven to earth, and we do it by doing what Jesus taught us. We, we do it by, by doing what Jesus told us, but by living like scripture says, by living like a righteous person, which is just a fancy way of saying living in right standing with God. Bringing heaven to earth is about you and I helping people to see Jesus, helping people to meet Jesus, and then helping people to walk in step with him. It's about living like Jesus did. And, and, and listen, the only way that I can figure out that you and I will ever actually start living like Jesus is if we embody God's priorities during our time here on earth. And I, that, that is a huge challenge for you and I to embody God's priorities. Because here's the deal. If you decide to put somebody else's priorities first, what does that mean about your priority? It means at minimum it goes to second, right? Living the way God wants us to live, that's how you bring God's kingdom to earth. It's about us showing unconditional love, which is not always easy. It's about us freely forgiving people like Jesus did, which that's super hard for me. It's super hard. I used to pride myself in saying, hey, you do me or my family wrong and I'll never forget about it. And then when I look at scripture, Jesus is like, well, maybe you don't necessarily need to forget it. However, you do need to forgive it. The apostle Paul wrote something that, that's very interesting to me in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. He said this, be careful, very careful. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I want you to notice that he said, be very careful. And, and th he wasn't saying be full of care here, okay? The, the, the term careful carries with it this idea of scoping out a situation. Uh, the apostle Paul was saying, God wants you and I to be able to anticipate decisions that could be harmful before it's too late to avoid them. That, that he wants us to be able to determine our actions and reactions before we react, before they cause harm. 
He wants us to be able to look and go, wait a minute, if I say that, if I do that, it's going to cause this or it's going to be heard like this, and he wants us to be aware of that. Paul goes on and he says, don't be foolish. Don't, don't lose sight what he's saying. Don't lose sight at what's at stake with every single decision you make. Every single decision. Don't, don't, don't lose sight of the implications of the way that if you claim to be a Christ follower, he's saying the way you act and react, it carries implications. And, and we said this last week, because the way you and I act or react, it, it's doing one of two things. It's either bringing heaven down or, or it's bringing hell up. Because, see, there are two forces that are active in the world, and they're, they're competing in your mind and in your body. In your, every day, there's two forces that want to govern you. There's a heavenly force and there's a hellish force. And remember, we said don't, when, we, when we use these terms in this series, think of, of heaven as a place full of God's presence and think of, of hell as a place where there is no presence of God. And they're battling. Every day there's a battle on. So, so whatever you and I do, however we react, we are in a real sense either bringing heaven down or, or we're pulling hell up. And, and here's the deal. The way you act and react, it doesn't just affect you. It affects the people you love the most. It affects the people who are looking at you, trying to figure out. You know one of the greatest, greatest reasons that there have been polls out on this for the last 20 years one of the primary reasons that people decide not to follow Jesus is because of Jesus' followers. Because of people who profess to be a follower of his, and they look at their life and they see no difference. They look and go, well, you're just as arrogant and judgmental and pompous and crude and rude as everybody else, so, so, they, so I, I'm not seeing the change. Everything we do, every way we react, there's people looking at us, there's people looking to us. Paul goes on and he says this, which is a weird statement. He commands us to understand what the Lord's will is. And that, that's kind of weird to me because you're like, wait a minute, how, how can you command me to understand something? How can you command me to understand what the Lord's will is? And, and when you look at this verse, he's really saying, listen, I want you to face up to what in, in your heart you know God's saying. I want you to face up to what the Holy Spirit's saying. I, I, I want you to admit it, and I want you to obey it. Because truth be told, most of us, most of us know right and wrong. Our, our grandsons were at our house this weekend, and, uh, and our oldest grandson want, wanted to, we were outside, and he's got this little four-wheeler, this little power wheels four-wheeler, and, and yes, we couldn't leave well enough alone, so we had to boost it up, right? You just got to do silly things as, as a pawpaw. So we boosted it up, and it's got this second gear, if you will, now, and it goes pretty fast. And we were going down our driveway, and he knows the rules, he knows that when you get to the end of the driveway that you're supposed to stop and you're supposed to look both ways. And when he first started riding it, we knew that he wasn't capable of, of, of making good decisions. So I put a ski rope on it and he would take off. And when he decided not to stop, it didn't matter because I just grabbed the rope and I would just hold it. And that little thing would just sit there and spin. And he's like, Papa, let me go. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to let you go. And you need to be thankful that I didn't because there was a car coming. It would have smashed you. And he was like, oh. Sometimes I think you and I live like God has a rope and he's just going to stop us, but there is no rope. There's no, there's no rope. He's saying, listen, I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. You know what's right and what's wrong. Do it. I, I love what the writer of Proverbs says in Proverbs 28. He says, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom, referring to God's wisdom, they're kept safe. He's saying, don't just rely on yourself and your feelings. Learn to trust God. Trust that acting the way and reacting the way Jesus modeled is not only right and it's not only good, but it's beneficial. It's beneficial for you and for everyone around. And it's even deeper than that. It's that behavior and that obedience and that type of lifestyle that brings heaven down to earth. Listen, I, I, I want to get, because that's something that we want to do all the time here, we, we want to get really like super practical with you today. Because if we don't use scripture practically and figure out how to apply it, it, it it's of no value. So, so I want to be super practical with you and I, I, I want to try my best to convince you, you and I have opportunities every single day, every day to bring heaven down to earth 
to help God's will in heaven come to earth, to help God's kingdom in heaven come to earth. It starts off in the morning for all of us when we're on the way to work and we should have left 15 minutes sooner than we did. So now we're running late and and we jump on the highway and someone cuts us off. The battle's on right there, isn't it? I mean, it's like you can either bring heaven down or you can bring hell up. And if you're like me, most of the time, the decision's the latter one. I don't know what it is. And, and, and Becky reminds me all the time, all three of our sons have inherited this trait and this bad behavior. We can be talking to one of our sons specifically on the phone and somebody cuts him off and he just, he just starts yelling. As if they can't hear you. And then thank God they can't, okay? I'm like, did you see the size of that guy? You don't want to be yelling at him like that. There's a battle on from the second we get in the car. Well, what about this? If someone undercuts you or betrays your trust at work, you're like, yeah, well, what if they do? Well, you have this opportunity to bring heaven down or, or to bring hell up by the way you act or react. Well, what about when you have a miscue with your spouse and, and you are tempted in your mind to run through all the reasons, every reason why he or she said that or did that, and you just start, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to bring heaven down or, or you have an opportunity to bring hell up. When you're traveling on the road for work by yourself, you're tired and you're worn out. There's no accountability, and nobody's going to know. Nobody you care about, anyway, is going to know. You have this opportunity to bring heaven down or to bring hell up. When the demands of work and life are just weighing you down, and you are so pressured, and, and, and nobody's looking, you have the opportunity to bring heaven down or to bring hell up. During this heated political season that we're in, when someone disagrees with your political stance, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to bring heaven down or to pull hell up. When you hear somebody at work talking about that lady or that guy, and and it's juicy, and and you're not sure if it's true or not, but man, it's juicy. And and so you, you, you listen, and then you're like, you see that person that you're really good friends with and, and you want to finish the story, add to the story. You have an opportunity to bring heaven down, to bring hell up. And, and you and I have gone both ways on this, haven't we? It, when I sat down and like look at my life, the, the thing that is in common with every bad decision, when I look at the life of Russ Klinky, there's a common denominator in every bad decision. There's a common denominator every time that heaven wasn't pulled down and hell was pulled up. Every single time there's a common denominator and it's Russ Clinky. And it's the same for your life. You were present every single time and you had a decision to make. And, and, And the decision matters because if you're a follower of Jesus, does your life look any different than people who aren't? If it doesn't, there, there's a problem. I mean, there's a huge problem. There's a disconnect. You and I play such a huge part in bringing God's kingdom, God's will to earth. Every one of us do. We have to be deliberate to allow God to govern and guide and guard our lives. We, we have to be deliberate. It is a daily choice. It's not a come down to the altar on Sunday morning and say a little prayer and sing a song and shed a few tears and then everything's great. If that floats your boat, you're welcome to come down later and do that, knock yourself out. But what I found is that doesn't do anything Monday morning when I go back out in the world. That's just this easy decision that we make sometimes for attention inside these four walls we call a church. There's a daily choice. And it's minute by minute by minute, isn't it? It's not, it's, not, it's not you just wake up and go, hey, I'm going to have this devotion and everything's fine. It's a minute-by-minute minute thing. Our grandson, who we spent a year of his life teaching him the responsibilities of this little four-wheeler, pulling him on that rope, and then we decided to take the rope off. Last night, he and I went for a drive, 
And we got to the end of the driveway and he said, Papa, I, I don't want to follow you today. I want you to follow me. And I'm like, no, no, Rhett, it just works best when I walk and you follow me. That, that way I can just look back and I, I can see you, I can hear you, you're not going too fast. And he's like, no, 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 no. Last time, last time Mimi and I did this, she let me go in front of her. She, she let me go first. And I'm like, okay, well, here, w w were there any perimeters to that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, she would tell me, like, that sign up there. I got to stop when I get to that sign and wait, or I got to stop at that driveway. I, I, I got to do that. And I went, okay, well, then I'm going to let you, you go. But you're going to have to make a choice. And the choice isn't going to be easy because you're going to see a squirrel or a bird or have this thought. So you, you, you understand, I'm, I'm letting you do this, and I'm, I'm going to follow you. And he went, okay. And he starts driving. He's not even two feet away from me. And I can hear him saying something, but I can't make out what it is. And I'm trying to get right up behind him without him noticing. And I'm like, what is he saying? And then when I got up right behind him, I heard him say, I got to stop at that sign. 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 And I'm like, what is going on with this kid? And he keeps saying it and saying it. And so I peel back a little bit, kind of fall back. And then we get, he gets to that sign and he stops. And he turns around and he goes, hey, Papa. I'm like, Just, you don't have to yell. I'm kind of, he goes, did I do good? I'm like, you did great. And he goes, okay. And he's looking at me and I go, look, see that blue van up there? You can drive all the way up to that blue van. But when you get to that blue van by that drive, you got to stop right there and wait for me, okay? And he went, yeah. And he started driving, and I could hear him say, I got to stop by the blue van. 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 And he gets to the blue van and he stops. And I'm like, this, this is, I, I was trying to record him because I'm like, this is beautiful. This is like an illustration for tomorrow, Red. I should bring you to church and have you ride the four wheeler. I'm like, this is, this is beautiful. It's there. Hey, did I do good? I went, you did great, man. All right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to let him go further. So I see a driveway that has these nice flowers at the end of the driveway. And I said, when you get up to that driveway, when you get that driveway right there with those pretty flowers, you stop and wait for Papa. Okay. And he went, yeah. And he smashed the gas pedal down and I'm trying to keep up with him and I'm not hearing him say anything. He's driving. He's just driving. He's approaching the driveway with the pretty fall flowers. And you know what he did? He just zoomed right past it and he just kept going. And I'm yelling, Rhett, you got to stop. You got to stop. Rhett. And he stopped and he turned around. He was like, what? But like, like, like I was the enemy, number one. And, and like I was stupid. And, and, and he goes, what, what do you want? And I went, where were you supposed to stop at? And he went, I don't remember. And I went, the driveway with the flowers. And he went, oh, yeah. And I'm like, but, but, but you didn't. And he went, you know what happened? And I went, yeah, you kept going. And he went, I quit telling myself. And I went, what? And he goes, let's try it again. What do you mean? He goes, let's try it again. Let's go back. We drove all the way back to where we started. And he goes, tell me that again. Rhett, I want you to stop at that driveway with those pretty flowers. He went, okay. He starts driving. I got to stop at that driveway with those flowers. I got to stop at that driveway with those flowers. I got to stop. And I don't know how this is going to work for him in school, okay? I already have a call into his mom and dad. I'm like, you guys may have a problem. Self-talk is great, but it may be distracting to the rest of the class when he's like, I got to keep my hands on myself. I got to keep my hands on myself. I got to keep my hands on myself. I got to learn how to spell this word. I got to know how to count the three. You know, it's, it's probably going to be an issue. Homeschool is probably the route they're going to need to go with this kid. But I'm like, isn't that amazing? And when they get up there, he stops. And as we're going back to our house and I'm tucking him into bed, he's like, he goes, hey, I did pretty good today, didn't I, Papa? I go, you did pretty good. He goes, I only screwed up that one time. I go, yeah, I only screwed up that one time. And as I'm laying in bed, I thought, you know what? If I'm going to be deliberate about allowing God to, to guide me and guard me and govern me, it, it's a daily choice, a minute by minute, and, and I should probably practice self-talk. Like, I should probably get in the car in the morning and say, if someone cuts me off, I'm not going to flip them off. If someone cuts me off, I'm not going to flip them off. 
If someone cuts me off, I'm not going to say bad words about them. I'm not going to try to speed up on their bumper. I'm not going to try to get next to them and give them the stink eye. I'm not, and, and then once I get to the office, I, I probably need to say, I'm not going to be frustrated if Kevin comes in and asks me a silly question. I'm not going to be frustrated if Kevin comes in and asks me a silly question. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to do this all day long, every day, every minute of my life. And then I think about this. You know why God wants to give you and I the Holy Spirit? Because he wants us to listen to that voice that we all hear over and over that says, don't, don't, don't say that. Yeah, but, but, but I want to say it. It's, it's so funny. I, this is so funny. I want to say it. Don't say that. Don't say that. Chances are it would be best not to say that. I want to ask you a question this morning. How? How are you deliberately bringing heaven down in your life? How are you doing it? Because there are two forces that are battling for your attention, for your allegiance. And I mean, you know, not to sound Star Warsy or anything, but it's a force of good or a force of evil. It is. And what are you doing? How are you deliberately bringing heaven down in your life? When I tuck that little four, it was his birthday yesterday, and he reminded us that 500 times. I'm four today, I'm four today, I'm four today. It was that self-talk again. He's like, Papa, I, I, you know, I, I did good. And he was so proud of himself. He's like, hey, when I come back to your house in a couple weeks and stay, am I going to be able to drive in front of you again? And I go, you're going to be able to drive in front of me again because, because you were responsible. And, and, and you proved that you could do this. So yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be able to do that. He closed his eyes. He's got this big smile on his face. And I couldn't help but think, you know what? As an adult, as a Christ follower, I would like to go to bed every night, not just with a smile on my face, but I would like to go to bed every night thinking that I may have actually put a smile on God's face because I decided to bring heaven down rather than pull hell up. And this isn't something, as you have just seen, it's, this isn't some freaky, crazy, spooky spiritual deal, okay? That, that's why, I don't know why churches do that. Well, I do because it's like people get oohs and ahs about that. That, that, that's not, that, that, that. Being spiritual means you're allowing the Spirit of God to govern and guard and guide your life. How are you deliberately bringing heaven down into your life? You're the only one that can answer that. I want to leave you with this quote this morning by King Arthur. He said this, May God grant us the wisdom to discover the right, the will to choose it, and the strength to make it endure. Let's pray. God, thank you. Um, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit to, to guard and to guide us. God, I pray that we would start listening to that still, small voice and that, that we'd obey it. God, help us to allow you to guard us and guide us. God, help us to be deliberate about it. And Father, I pray that you would, would help us be deliberate about bringing your kingdom right here to earth. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen.